Hey gang, thanks for tuning in. My name is Terry and I'm doing a video about mental health. Well, really about mental illness, mine in particular. Um, I've been encouraged to do this by some, there's, by other YouTubers. Anyway, there's a sm ecosystem of YouTubers, relatively small, actually you know, all sub 2K or lower. And they just do these wildest, bravest things. And I'm like, and I really enjoy watching them. And um, so I finally say, well, you know, it's it's time to, for me to go ahead and put out there. First of all, I'm super nervous. I mean, just jittery like I'll get out. But anyway, there's three people I'd like to really say, hey, check these people out and they're the ones who made me go for it. A lot of others, but let me name these three. Tripolar Troy. Um, check him out. His channel's got links to everybody. And there's Amelia Lecter. She's incredible. And finally, Deskroma. I mean, one of the bravest people I've ever met. She puts things out there and and does it in a coherent way that Anyway, this one's about that. Anyway, back to my favorite subject, me. So anyway, they're playing around with my diagnosis for a very, very long time. I've been diagnosed bipolar one with you know all sorts of psychosis going on, but recently they're looking at schizoaffective. You know, I think they've actually made it official, but. Things that doesn't affect the meds, you know, I really don't care much, but it does affect the therapy I'm getting. And I'm learning that the psychosis has gone back way earlier than I ever thought. I mean, like pre-puberty. So, that's a lot of things. Um, I'm just coming off a really nasty mixed episode. It lasted almost three months and it was if you know anything about bipolar mixed episodes are the absolute worst I mean I think I'd rather have an honest God psychotic manic psychotic break than three months of a mixed episode um, they're really hard to medicate your way out of anyway it finally happened I finally cleared it um, and now though I'm on a hypo manic rebound and it's just well I won't say it's bad bad but you know first of all it's just wrecking my checking account because everything looks so good everything looks so inviting everything I need everything and it all makes perfect rational sense just, just let me give you an example okay let me get this straight. You took all the money you made franchising your name and bet it against the Harlem yeah. Globetrotters? Uh, the generals. I the, the generals, generals were, were due. due. Uh, that made perfect rational sense to me. So anyway, I'm getting all this stuff and and my, my poor family, I'm calling my kids three, four times a day. I mean, my kids are in their very late teens or in their early 20s. No one wants to hear from your dad that much. I mean, give me a fucking break. But anyway, I'm bouncing around. But also, it's given me the energy to do this. And um, so it's not all a horrible thing. Um, well, it is a horrible thing. It's especially going to be a horrible thing when I crash. I'm going to try and get this thing medicated down as soon as possible. Um, but I see my, my, my therapist on um, a couple of days from now and hopefully you know, bring it up and get some pills. I don't know what other pills to take. We've ramped up all my other pills so much that there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. Um, you, you know, I've got my Lamictal, you know, up to 600 and I've got to break it up into taking it twice daily because if I hit it all at once I get like my vision swims 
and you know my geodon is at you know 140 and I excuse me and was 280s yeah 160 anyway what they didn't tell me during the next episode is it's not only enough to eat 500 calories before you take the stuff you've got to eat exactly the right combination of fat and protein so that I thought for a while geodon's great it's got no side effects well anything that doesn't work has no side effects so I can't go back to my old standby um, Seroquel. Seroquel crush, used to crush any manic or hypomanic or psychotic symptoms I had. But now um, this stuff started making me have shallow breath, I couldn't stay still, had jerky movements, I couldn't lay down. Um, just I'm not going to self-diagnose myself with what that term is but anyway I had to stop taking the stuff so that's kind of where I'm here now but so far you know this is this is week one and a half of hypo so it's not that bad yet you know I'm really just at this point okay in case you haven't noticed I'm not in my twenties yeah so as far as YouTube goes, I got that going against me. But as far as mental illness goes, I've got that going for me. Because, you know, I've been around the block a few times. I know what to do and what not to do, especially with hypo. The quote unquote fun type of hypo, anyway. Basically, you try to sit on your hands as much as possible. And you know you're just going to do things that you have to apologize for later and you try to keep it down to the minimum you know in a perfect world I'd nail the door shut and kill my internet connection and throw my phone away so that I just bounce around the walls of my own apartment and wouldn't have to have anybody to say you know when I did that I was but the worst part of it is I'm pretty sure it's going to end in some sort of crash. That's the real bad part of hypomania, is the coming down crash. Um, oh, speaking of bouncing around and rushed ideas and thoughts, um, this crown with Lauren, so happy for you. Congratulations on the nuptials. Just couldn't, just couldn't work out better. It's, it's super terrific. Anyway. Um, this isn't going to be an overly long video. It's really just meant to kind of get to know me and see what happens. And I'm a little bit nervous about the hypo thing. Because while it's fun, you know, I'm not a teenager. I'm not 21 anymore. I know it's, while it might not be dangerous, well, it moderately it, but it's not like having a mixed episode or wide open mania or a psychotic break um, it could lead to any of those things and the rebound is often depression and if you're way more on the manic side of the spectrum like I am you can't take antidepressants so you have to just you have to just lower your you, you just have to basically suffer through your depression and that is no fun um, and I'm so I know if I don't end this as soon as possible um, that's what I'm looking at I just got through seeing my, my psychiatrist a couple of weeks ago and he thought I was doing good enough that he pushed my appointment out for two months and if I wait to adjust my meds for two months, it's going to be bad news. But anyway, how are you doing? Because I hope you're doing well. You deserve to be doing well. And please, take your meds. Because I'm kind of assuming people watching this are mentally interesting themselves. And I know a lot of people think, 
well, I'll go natural. I'll take supplements. You know, I'll please, please, please take your meds. It's like antibiotics. Even once your symptoms clear up, you need to keep on taking them so you don't come back. Well, enough about that PSA. Moving back home. Um, like I said, I got a couple kids. They're almost totally grown. You know, the weird thing was, when I was that age, you were considered grown. But, you know, that's not really fair. That's just the old person in me coming out. Here's how I see it. Generationally, you've got your, you got the baby boomers, then underneath them you got me, the Gen Xers, then you got the millennials. And this generation coming up, when everything shakes out, they're going to be called generation anxiety. I've never seen such a large group, a mass of people with so many anxiety issues. It's just, so, the, so many people I've talked with, their friends, um, you know, p other people my age who are in management and hiring, and they're like, well, I'm hiring good kids. They really want to be productive workers, but just their anxiety is just crippling. And if any of you are younger, I don't know why you'd watch an old man, but if you are and you're suffering with anxiety, the good news is there is help. Um, go out there and see it. Speak to your doctor about it. Don't, please don't be like I was and suffer for a couple of decades with something before you get help. Um, it's not all in your head. It's not because of the internet. It's not because of your video games. It's, it's physical factors outside of your control. Maybe therapy alone will help, but therapy and um, medicine can definitely, definitely change things around for you. Well, like I said, this is the first video, so I want to keep it kind of short. Um, and hopefully this will work out to be a recurring thing. Anyway, I'm, I'm might be screaming into the void, but let's face it, I've screamed at a lot worse things than voids in my time. So, got that. So once again, thanks for watching. And take care of yourself. That's important. And if you have even a little bit of energy left over, try to take care of someone else too. They need a hand up. We all do. So, thanks and we'll see you again next time. Bye.